Hello everybody, our third single for Forza Azzurri. There you go, there's the cover. Um, I'm sure you've seen it plenty of times by now. We're going to be looking at the first movement of the concerto for violin and strings and continued by Vivaldi RV353 in A major. What can I say about this piece? Well, it's ridiculously difficult, this piece, mostly because of the bowing technique, but it's also the left hand. You need to be relatively adept. The manuscript's quite interesting. It survives in Vivaldi's hand. And one of the things that one quite often sees in Vivaldi manuscripts is that he kind of gets a bit confused as to where the bar line should be going. He starts quite early in this piece, like on the second system. So on the second, you can see where he's actually, he's originally put the bar lines in there, 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 and there, and then gone, oh, oh whoops, no, I need to, uh, so, I've, he, so he's erased those and reinserted the bar lines. This kind of thing happens so often in Vivaldi concertos. You almost kind of wonder whether he's sort of busy composing with the telly on, not particularly paying attention, but we will never know the reason for this. Anyway, one of the interesting things about this opening movement occurs at the start of the second solo, E major. It is reminiscent of the bird song at the beginning of spring, same key in this instance. And also, very interestingly, he's written on these quavers in the solo part here, he's written mordente. So you're supposed to play them as mordants, not as trills. Playing it as a mordant actually means that it's a lot harder for the left hand. Ideally, I would have an extra finger to play this part, but unfortunately I've only got the four. So you've got this, and then he writes M following on in the next part of the sequence. The M sign appears in the beginning of spring, just like that, and is an ornament that I can't think of any other instance where Vivaldi uses it, which is interesting, if you're somebody like me. Anyway, if you're moving, moving on to the second movement, one gets the idea that maybe this is a concerto that Vivaldi very much composed on the hoof, so to speak. Particularly, we, we have a vague idea that Vivaldi composed from the top down. So often what he would do, he would write a solo part out and and then fill in the blanks underneath it after he'd finished the solo part. This you can see here because I'm guessing by the direction here on the second system where he wrote solo, I'm guessing that is where he originally intended the soloist to start. So this solo up here must originally have been conceived before he'd filled out all the parts as a tutti section. But then when he obviously got to the end of the movement, he thought, actually, no, do you know what? That's actually quite nice as a solo, so we'll keep it like that. One of the things that makes this concerto so unbelievably difficult is Vivaldi's relentless use, particularly in the last movement, of both up and down bow staccato passages. I can't do down bow staccato, and in my defence, I think relatively few people can. I can do up bow staccato though, and, and a few more people can do that. But, but anyway, the fun starts here. You can see endless scales, all with dots on that are quite tricky. And then he thinks, okay, done scales, so we'll, what we'll do now is we'll, we'll have chords and up bow staccato. This is all up bow staccato, this one. And as well as the, the, the up bow staccato being difficult, the chords, which are pretty foul, because you've got E sharps, you've got B sharps, A sharps. If we go on, there you go, the B sharps. I mean, it's really, really, really horrible. Anyway, and then you go, okay, so we've done that. Now, the last solo, we can, we'll start off some, with some ridiculously quick scales of Demi Tony Quavers, and then we'll have some more up bow staccato, up very high. He's written here, al lottava alta. So you play that up the octave, and you can see all the up bow staccato stuff there, and a very long one here, which goes to there, and then more up bow staccato, and more up bow staccato, and then another one there. And so, yeah, you get the idea. It's a pretty foul piece for a fiddle player to play. But having said that, it is a very, very beautiful piece of music. So you're going to hear in the single the opening movement, enjoy that, and then enjoy the whole concerto when the disc is released. <laughs> 